It's rush hour in Kampala. The air stinks of exhaust fumes. Private car ownership is steadily growing in Uganda. It's expected to rise by 40% this year. Pauline Korokundo has had her own car for the past few months. It's made her more independent, but she has trouble with the pollution in the city. I really feel it. Sometimes I can't even drive with my windows down. Yeah, I have to pull them up all the time because it really affects me. Pauline realizes that she's part of the problem because she drives her own car. But she's working on finding an alternative. The 24-year-old engineer is a student at the Makareri University. She's part of a team of students from different disciplines, design, construction and engineering. Look at the technology that was proposed, a bit intricate in development. Together, they've developed an electric car. It's a first in Uganda, a unique project. Like in welding and so on and so forth. But putting the power train together, computers are we going to use for what to run this system? And this is what the car, the Kira, looks like. It's a two-seater that goes up to 80 kilometers an hour. It doesn't emit pollutants and is relatively quiet. A model car not really meant for mass production. Nevertheless, Team leader Paul Muzazisi is still very proud of it. We decided to do a proof of concept to demonstrate that Uganda has the talent, it has the discipline, and it has the commitment to be able to realize such a high-tech intervention of an electric car. The project was all the more difficult, given that Uganda has no car manufacturing industry. Getting all the parts was a challenge. Standard components like the engine and the lithium battery had to be imported. This vehicle was assembled from right here. The mechanical work was done from right here. We're on the ground floor of the university in a workshop. This is where Philip Kaseike and his colleague produced the car body. They didn't have the right tools, but it was fun building the first car of their lives. We did the welding, we did the drilling, and fixing a number of things on the car. And that is our major part and arranging, of course, setting up the machine, uh, the car itself, was our part. Of course, the electric car needs charging. It takes five hours and uses normal household electricity of 240 volts. The fully charged Kira can travel 80 kilometers. The technology is fairly new to us, and the manufacturers of electric cars out there also do not have the documentation readily available for consumption. So there was a lot of figuring out what we needed to do, and it was quite a major challenge, more so given that we were working with undergraduate students here. So <laughs> there was quite a lot to be learned. The students worked on the car for over two years with plenty of ups and downs. Pauline helped develop the onboard electronics. Now she's working on her next project. The hybrid plug-in solar bus, yeah, we'll have maybe to integrate some solar on the prototype we've already done, but to make something bigger and, yeah, to do some intelligent charging in there. That's what's next. Fuel is expensive in Uganda, and the country is reliant on oil exports. Smart solutions for renewable energies are in huge demand. The country already generates its own hydroelectric power. Definitely electric cars can be an alternative. And yeah, if I could have one, I would really get one. But that might take a long time. Like elsewhere, conventional gas-guzzling cars and trucks dominate the roads. 
electric cars may have a hard time gaining a foothold here, too.